Hello, this is a talk on Node.js by Mosh. So Node.js was created in 2009 and it is runs an MIT license. The current version as of 2021 is version 15. It is based on the Google Chrome V8 engine. And the main idea is that data is a server-side uh, program. That means the server generates the data and transfers it to the client and the client is a browser that displays the data. There are many server-side technologies, like the main one we are going to talk about, Node.js, there's also PHP, JSP, Django, Python, and Java servlets. So this talk is mainly about Node.js. So what are differences from regular uh, web services? Uh, it is a non-blocking I.O. So it doesn't block while it's doing I.O. And the uh, engine is a V8 JavaScript engine. And major difference between C programming servers and uh, Node.js is it's a single threaded event loop. So it's everything's running a single thread. So there's not much uh, chance of collision of data corruption and stuff. And other advantages, there are millions of modules available on web. And it's also dangerous because they're sometimes they're compromised and sometimes they're deprecated. So you end up losing your library if you're not up to date all the time and it runs on Windows, Linux and Mac. And the other big advantage is the same language is used for front-end and back-end. Front-end means the rendering and back-end means the server. It has a big active community. So there's a big advantage you can just look up anything and find answers to questions that are blocking you. So it, it is basically what is Node.js. It's an asynchronous I.O. package. The core engine is C++ and in uh, on top of V8 and the remaining is in JavaScript and it can run thousands of concurrent connections with minimal uh, CPU overhead and memory it's not a web framework it's not a language but it does use uh, based on no a JavaScript language so let's get started with uh, Node.js first you to install download and install Node.js uh, package so you can install it in on Windows and SQL and tools Node.js then you install the modules you're going to use. Modules are like libraries. So if you say npm install module name, it, it gets it from the internet and installs it. And this is local to the app in the folder that you're working in. It will only be available to the app. And if you install it with a minus g, that means install it globally so that every app can use it. But the problem is uh, when you save the package and share it, this serial is local to installation and this module is basically part of the the the, pro the project that you're working on. So let's look at example. So the simplest example is it also works in Chrome. You just say hello.js and just console.log. And how do you run it? You just say node hello.js and it, it console.log, it prints it on your console. That's the simplest program you can start with, hello world. Let's look at the next uh, slide. So the way it works is it's a JavaScript engine. There's a user interface, there's a browser engine, there's a rendering engine, and there's a JavaScript at the bottom. And they, all these are JavaScript VMs, Firefox, Internet Explorer, V8, Safari, and these are all front-end. They also have front-end. Rhino is a back-end engine. So the ideas in uh, Node.js is a single-threaded asynchronous processing instead of classical multi-threading in C, C++ and Java that we see. And it minimizes overhead and latency and basically uh, horizontal scaling instead of vertical scaling. Horizontal scaling means you just add more threads and uh, more services and each service runs independent of everything else. That's the way uh, microservices work. So it is mo mostly used by applications that serve a lot of requests but they don't uh, interact with each other a lot and they don't need a lot of computation power per request. And, it, and the requests are not heavy in ca uh, calculations and uh, so it basically leads to a lot of parallelism uh, support. So you can run it on 100 machines services and each one will work independent of everybody else. So th we have less problems with concurrency but it's main, main, mainly for web services not for uh, uh, computations and like uh, scientific calculations. So what does a Node.js event loop look like? So the so event loop is basically a single thread running around here. And requests come in, and it register and request actually makes a callback. It is a callback. And the callback will basically do something in the file system database or computation. And when it completes the function, the callback function is called, 
and it replies and it triggers and it sends the data back to the request. So the main thing is to avoid synchronous code because it blocks the event loop. If you're doing something in a synchronous loop, uh, heavy duty computation, it will block other service, other requests from being processed. And so what you do is you supply a callback function that will be called when your uh, computation is complete. So let's look at example of blocking versus non-blocking. A simple example of reading a file from data from a file and to displaying the data. So in synchronous IO, what happens is there's a thread running. It does a, a file read and then it has to wait. And when it completes, it continues. In asynchronous part, uh, basically the thread is running. It makes a call for file IO. It will just continue. And when it completes the file IO, uh, it will do a callback function and uh, do whatever the file IO has has to process the data has given out. So how to use modules? Uh, and so first we do what you do is you know npm install http fs fs is file system express express is a, a module for uh, web services and the way to use it is you just say var http require http so this will load the http module into the main uh, uh, project and var means it's a variable and you can also use constant constant means that fs is a constant that means you cannot change fs it is remains a constant and it's much better to use constant if you know you're not going to change it because then uh, it's just uh, safer and express is another package for serving data you just say require to load the uh, library into and this is the object that gets created so let's look at example of blocking IO file reader and the, the double slash is a C++ uh, comment style read data from a file and print on the console. So you do var data equal to fs. fs is a library that we loaded and read file synchronous and there's a file name. So it reads a file in, into data and will block till the file is completely read. Then you console to log the data that is there. So and this is a, a classical uh, C comment. And what's a non-blocking file reader with callback? So basically, you, you do file fs dot read file, and you give it a file name. This argument one, and argument two is a function, a callback function that will be called when the file is read, and it's an anonymous function. We just give it a name, but you may not even see a name, and it takes two arguments. If in case some error happens, what to do, and the data that came back from the reading the file. So error if it's not error then you print out the data. If there's an error, then you have to print something saying that cannot read file or whatever the error message is. So this example of a non-blocking. So when you run this function, it will immediately complete. And this function will be hanging in the background. It will complete when the data file has been read. So the, the main thread won't be blocked. So when is a Node.js more useful for uh, messaging and chat apps, real-time applications, proxies, and concurrent applications, and communications, and coordinators. These are all kind of services that are running for web. Let's look at an example. And uh, the top level is normally asynchronous. So there's a different uh, MJS module. It's a top level asynchronous module. So if we say cat, so here's an example of a cat main.mjs. Instead of using uh, require, you have to use import. It's similar, it looks like Python. You import star means everything as, and you give it a name mylib from this uh, mylib.mjs. This is a file that you are loading. And since uh, this is an asynchronous module, you have to use await. Await means it will wait till this function completes. Mylib, this mylib, and mylib is a function called f1. Here's uh, mylib.mjs, and it has a function f1, which takes two arguments and returns a uh, string back. And so what will happen to await? Await will uh, wait till mylib completes. And then you call f1 with hello world as two strings. It will come here, a and b. And, and this uh, back quotes means uh, interpolate the string. And anything with dollar and curly braces is interpolated as a variable from the, uh, the, the, vari the a. So a and b are the in the context. So it will fill in hello out here and world and return that hello world. So the console log, this will wait till console.log prints hello world. 
and in uh, mylib.mg you to export the function that you are uh, you, ex uh, you you defined out here otherwise it will not be visible in the import out here in main.js and in when you run a node main.mjs it will print hello world so let's look at an example of a, a web server so first you import the the express libra library then you create an app with call express and then constant port this is the port you'll serve and use the url that you will uh, you will ex expose so say app dot all means uh, either whatever kind of request it is either post or a get or a uh, delete or put request and then it takes two arguments request and response and this is an arrow function arrow functions don't have a context so arrow function just basically the context is the the whole uh, of the thing and th this is arrow function and uh, what happens is when somebody calls this uh, uh, API uh, slash hello it will come here with a request and then the response is an object then console.log you will say serving request and this is a uh, node.js built-in function called json stringify it takes request.query and it prints it on the screen uh, in the terminal and why do you need json.stringify because almost every object in uh, node.js is a json object and it this one just formats it nicely and then the, the response the response is object in which there is a, a function called send and then we send back hello world so this is a uh, API uh, that that you, anyone can call. We'll see in the next page. And how do you start the server? Then you start listening on the port. This port is 3000, and this is again a function, arrow function. It says the second argument is a function, which says call this function whenever the request comes in, and the function will just do. Uh, right now, just say console dot log app listening on port. Again, this is a, a back code, so it will print out listening on port 3000. Let's see how it works. So you install first npm install express npx npx is the the node server and node mon. This is a monitoring server. Then you start like this npx node mon and ignore JSON file. So what happens is node mon keeps running the application. Every time there's a change, it restarts the server. And ignore JSON means that means if there's a change to JSON file, don't restart the server. Just ignore them. And so server .js, if you edit it, it will restart the server if the file gets changed. So when you run this node uh, server.js, this uh, this thing gets run, and this thing will say app listening on port 3000 will get printed, and then uh, and then serve and then when you call with a curl from another terminal, uh, localhost colon 3000 on port and hello, and then this is a parameter get parameter q equal to one, and it's saying serving. Uh, so when you call this function curl. It will go to port 3000, and this function will uh, get the say request uh, q equal to one came, and the server returns hello world. So that's an example of a web server. Then uh, after you have written your code, you need to lint it. Lint is basically first you need to install the ES lint. You need to initialize the lint, then you run the lint, and lint will basically tell you of any any uh, syntax uh, problems that you might have in your code or unused variables or uh, things that are like unreachable code and stuff like that. Then, then how do you run main? And you can run it in debug mode. Say run node inspect on breakpoint inspector. On this point, uh, on this port, it's running the the debugger now main.js. So how do you debug? So you say node debug main.js. It's a listening on uh, 3000 and connecting on this local port. Break at main. So now you have a debug breakpoint. And you have the classical uh, debug uh, commands. So you can run it, you can continue, you can st step over it, next step, uh, step into, step out. Backtrace gives you the the stack trace. You can put a breakpoint, clear a breakpoint, watch for watch variables changing, and there are all these functions. So restart, kill, script, break on, break on something exception, and version. So then R means to run. So you're running a debugger, Af and then. The, now let's look at a real life example of a program. So this is a, this is a, a file called uh, pgdemo.js. So in this case, uh, we need to load pg. pg stands for Postgres. 
library. So what do we need to do? First we need to create a uh, connection to the Postgres server. So pool is a connection and then you can say new pg.pool and this is a JSON object from here to here and you have a username Postgres, host name is localhost and database name is mydb. Password basically you need to export it as dbpass on the command line. So then uh, this process will read from the environment, process.environment dbpass, whatever the password to log into the database is and with the username Postgres and it's running, connecting on this port 5432, that's a, the usual Postgres port. Then you have a API, a get time for example. This is asynchronous function, anonymous function, it gives a request and a response and then uh, we have a tryout. A try means basically if something goes wrong, it will catch it. Otherwise, the whole thing will hang, it will not reply. So then first thing you do is uh, and try and then you have to get this, uh, you wait, uh, wait to means to wait for the query, uh, query, this query. Pool is this pool for a database a connection. Then you give it a, a SQL query, select now. This is a SQL statement, uh, Postgres P PG SQL statement and it will return something now. Then you what you do is render it. And then timer2 is a uh, EGS file and then you give it a variable called message and a value equal to now. So it will render this thing. If something goes wrong, the error uh, on console you will see error message, this error. And uh, and on uh, you will render the error message on, on the thing saying that timer2 on message will be error. Okay, let's see that this error is caught out here. So how do you render it? So we use uh, something called an EJS, Extended JavaScript Template. So the example of it is a div and inside the uh, HTML you can use uh, uh, Node.js uh, EJS variables and JavaScript. So this is a JavaScript and it says that if it is a local, it is a local in the local there is a variable called message. If message is a uh, print a message. This is a this render string, otherwise nothing to render. And this is a div. So how do we run it? You run the PG demo. It runs a node server. Then you call it uh, localhost slash time. So here we are calling this time slash time. So when you run it, uh, basically it will print the time time from the it will get the time from here. Select now from the database from database connection and database will give you a time. And you render the time using this HTML script. So local message will have the message. You print the message. And this will get rendered on the, uh, if suppose you call it from Chrome or curl, it will just print it out, uh, the div will get printed on the screen. So there are a couple of things about uh, ES6 that are new or uh, you need to know and there are lots of things. So I will just cover a bit now and we will continue in the later bit of things. So, so the first thing is called a hoisting, the variables are hoisted to the function and global scope. But the value is only available, the val variable value is only available after you assign it. So that's one thing, hoisting is common and let is hoisted and declared only once and it's block scope. Block scope means like a block is a curly braces. And the other, other two kinds of declarations are let and constant. They also block scope and available after declaration. That's about the variable declarations, but you should always declare your variables to define the scope of the variables and the better to define the, the smallest scope possible. Hoisting basically is troublesome because it pushes a, a, a variable is available uh, even before it is declared. It's visible to because of the, com the way JavaScript compiles the code. Then we have two kinds of for loops, for in and for off. So this for in iterates over index of an array and for off iterates over the objects of object for a uh, list of objects that you have. So for example, let's look at example, we have A, A is array with A1 is A and B, A2 is C and D. You can concatenate them using a spread operator. That's a triple dot. That's again a ES6 syntax. That means you take triple dot A1, triple dot A2, it gets concatenated into A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And here's an example of iterating over the object, uh, constant key in object, you're iterating over key values. So you can iterate over it. Constant just means that like this key will not change inside the loop. And you are just printing the key and values of the array. So you take each key and the value. This is uh, 
the back code allows you to uh, interpolate the variables inside the dollar sign and that's the end of it and most of the stuff is online you can find it on tutorials point or java point and uh, stack overflow thank you